Unicorns and glitter and taxidermy critters are just some of the things they like. They also enjoy 80s hair bands, Grizzly Adams and John Goodman, so if you think that's weird then you can take a hike. But the things they enjoy the most are making art and cracking jokes. So without further ado, here are your hosts. You've got your two artsy gals, your two artsy gals. Here are your two artsy gals. Hey listeners, it's Katie here. It is Memorial Day weekend, and I hope that you are all out doing the fun things that you do for holiday, long holiday weekends with your families. Um, I am at home this weekend because it rained and I don't like rainy camping. I'm too old for that shit. But I'm also thinking about our servicemen and women and feeling grateful and, and thankful for all the sacrifices they've made for us. And I hope that you are all thinking about that also while you're out celebrating and having fun because it's in the name of our servicemen and women and all their sacrifices. Uh, this episode, because it's Memorial Day weekend, is going up a little late because I've been just chilling around here. Uh, we, I mentioned last week that we're going to be trying some new stuff as far as asking our listeners for a little bit of help to keep the show going. Um, as you know, the Patreon account didn't work and I deleted that and we've tried a bunch of stuff. So now we're just going to start asking for what we need as we need it. And hopefully someone goes, oh, hey, that's easy. I can do that. So the first thing that you can do is to donate cash money to us. Um, you can do that through our website at twoartsygals.com. Uh, there is a link that says donate and it is a will allow you to donate through PayPal, which is very safe and very easy. And you can do a one-time donation in whatever amount you can afford. Every single thing helps. You can set it up for a monthly donation, which would also be super awesome in any amount. Uh, we just need a little bit of help offsetting the out-of-pocket expenses for the podcast. Because as you know, the podcast is free. Uh, we don't make any money on it. And it, it gets a little bit hard sometimes to be pumping money out on something that we love doing, but we're not making an income from it. So there's that. And that will help us buy items that we want to test to talk to you guys about. Um, it helps us with our uh, storage fees for podcasts so that we can keep all of our old episodes up for you guys. So you can go back and listen to the very first episode or new listeners can go back and listen to the very first episode. Uh, it helps us own our domain names. So we're just two artsygals.com and we always need help with that. Also, if you would prefer Oh, one note about that. If we have had listeners in the past that didn't like using their credit cards online and we figured out a really cool way around that, you can go to any grocery store and buy a prepaid credit card, uh, put the amount of money that you want to donate on that prepaid pre credit card, and then use that to make a donation through PayPal again, which you can do through our website to our, to our .com, And then your uh, checking account information never has to, or credit card never has to have anything to do with the donation and you don't have to worry about it. But again, PayPal is super safe, um, for those kind of things. Um, you can also do the same thing with a prepaid credit card or just use your regular credit card and get us something off of our wish list on Amazon. And I thought it would be fun to tell you guys what we have planned and the kind of things that we want to talk about. So on amazon.com, you on our two hours, the gals wish list, which there's a button to reach from our website. Um, you will, you'll see the Amazon wish list button and just push it. It'll take you directly to this list. Uh, we are planning an episode on, uh, bead work, seed using little seed beads. And, um, you know, you've seen that, uh, very beautiful work on like clothing or on handbags or purses, whereas the beads are all sewn in to make a beautiful picture. And we would like to experiment with that so we can be more educated about it when we talk to you about it. Uh, we also would like to do some work with black canvas and black gesso, um, and talk a little bit about different kinds of gesso. So right now we have black canvas panels on our wish list and we have some black gesso and we have some clear gesso. So uh, we would like to talk to you about 
oh, we want to do an episode on screen printing and we have a screen printing kit up there. And we'd like to do that this summer because it's a fun outdoor activity. We also want to talk about gelatos and jelly printing. We have a really fun tapestry loom on there because we really want to do a heavy uh, tapestry arts episode and hopefully have a guest for that. I don't know. Um, there are some, if, if you're worried about, uh, price, if, 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 if this is cost prohibitive, we have small items on there too. Like we have the needles that we need for beading that are five bucks and threads. And we also have some, um, right now there's some Ranger, uh, Dylan Reevely's diffusion paints and some little distress paints, uh, that we would like to or delusion paints that we would like to experiment with and talk to you guys about. So you can always access that wish list through twoartsygals.com and send us a present. We would, we, we appreciate any and all help that we can get from you guys that will allow us to keep this going. Because like I said, I think in another episode recently, it's really hard to justify buying a product that and Lonnie and I are probably going to use one time because it's not something that we that's in our wheelhouse and that we normally do as art every day. So when we buy it just to talk about it on the podcast, which we love doing and is exciting, it kind of breaks the bank. We are, we both live on, you know, a small budget. So when we get help with this kind of stuff, it allows us to do more for you and doesn't leave us hanging high and dry for covering that whole cost. So again, to artsydallsgals.com, you can find access to all of those things and all of those ways to support your favorite podcast. Uh, we are on all the social medias. So the other way that you can support us and we really, really appreciate as well is sharing about us and telling people about us and spreading the word about two artsy gals. Uh, we're on Facebook as two artsy gals and we post there the most. Uh, we are also on Instagram to RC gals. I forget to post on there sometimes, but we are there. We're on Twitter. Uh, and we post there at least once a week with a link to the new newest episode. Uh, we're on Pinterest and we have a board for every episode where we post all of our research and all of our ideas so that you guys can go look at it. And we even post pictures of stuff that we do sometimes there. Um, so yeah, oops, my husband is coughing in the background while I'm recording. I'm going to shut the door. Anyway, this introduction is getting really, really long. Go find us on all the social medias. We're twoartsygals.com. And you can subscribe to this podcast through iTunes, Stitcher, and through the Podomatic app. And the Podomatic app will allow you to access, oh man, so many cool podcasts. So anyway, enjoy this week's show and we'll talk to you next week. Hey everybody, this is Katie. And this is Lonnie. Oh. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and you're listening to Toy to Girls. <laughs> we were talking about speed recording because we need to hurry so we can go to lunch. Only because we want to make it to Fat City before it closes. Yeah. Because I hate being the dick that comes in like five minutes before closing because like, I, feed me, I have been a waitress. <laughs> yes. And you all know that soul crushing. Like, yeah, you have all your backup done. Yep. Everything's all the tables up, are clean. All the tables are clean. And some dickweed comes in like yep. three minutes that before closing. To coffee people all the time. And mm-hmm. then they want a fucking milkshake or something really messy. And then you're like, oh, uh, kill then me. Then you're like just standing there like file in your nails, actually waiting for them to eat because you have nothing left to do. Yeah. And every time they put it, empty a plate, you're grabbing it to get it clean. Yes. People, don't do that to your fucking servers. No. Just seriously. go to a restaurant that's open later. Yeah. Don't be that person. Yeah. I am, am never that person. No. Because you know the pain. No. You I waited tables all through high school. And for like, until I got pregnant, well, I got my first retail job when I was 22. Mm-hmm. So it was all food service before I worked at the million store. Don't do that. No. Like, at least when you go into, like, a store, they're like, bitches, we're closed and get your shit to the register. Yeah, hurry up. Yeah, they'll start fucking hurting you and chasing you and stuff. Because you still want a good tip. Yeah. When you're waiting tables. Because you don't make shit per hour. Yeah, so, like, maybe I can get another three bucks. Yeah. 
if these people would fucking hurry up so I could I go can home go to my the... family and daycare's yeah. gonna close and then they're gonna charge me fifty dollars. So like, thanks. Yeah, right, guys. So <laughs> <laughs> maybe if you ever do that to your weights, you better person, tip her like fifty dollars, and you should bring her flowers. Yeah, flowers and pay for her daycare and then she overtime can, and charges. And then she can press them. Yay! <laughs> Remember how sweet humanity really is. Yeah. Or think of you and burn them. Because <laughs> <laughs> they burn much better when they're dry. They do. Mm-hmm. We had people that used to do that regularly at the little place that I worked at when I was in high school. And it was always on a night that I had a date. Oh, yeah. Something. Yeah. You got a show to go to. And you don't want to go are like fucking smelling waiting for you. like fried fucking food no. because you have to shower. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Fuckers. Yeah. We're talking about press flowers today. <laughs> and you can't rush press flowers. You have to take your time. You with do. Those. You have to take your time and be gentle with you them. You can't just walk in at the last minute and decide to have a press flower. No, you can't. It doesn't work. You're not going to have a press flower. No. You're going to have a sad, wilty, upset flower like your waitress. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, since we are apparently having an attack of the sillies right now, I have to tell you, one of the best stories of my childhood happened because of pressed flowers. Awesome! (laughs) Because when I was a little girl, my mom didn't swear. Ever? She might have what if she stubbed her toe? She might say shit. Yeah. Like, shit or damn it, and we would be like... (gasps) Because my mom Mom! actually really turn into a career fucking jedi swearer until we were teenagers and she hated us because we were jerks <laughs> um so when we were really little though my mom used to do she used to press flowers my dad built her a flower press and she used to press flowers and then she would arrange them on felt with a felt background and put them in a picture frame oh and she would take well this is how it happened so my cousin's mom, like my aunt by marriage, her sister got married, her little sister. And so her little sister was going to pay my mom to press her wedding bouquet and then arrange it oh, on felt yeah. and frame it, which is a really nice way to preserve your wedding bouquet mm-hmm. so you don't have this gross wad of dried flowers falling apart, gathering dust somewhere. Mm-hmm. Um and she, you know, looked at the picture and tried to arrange it. Now, of course, some pic- some flowers you can't. And yeah. we'll get into that because okay, some flowers yeah. don't press well. But no. anyway, so my mom did this to her wedding bouquet and she didn't want to pay for it. She apparently disliked what my mom did. And my mom worked really fucking hard on it. Oh, no. Like really hard. So... I don't know why my cousin Mikey was at our house, but my cousin Mikey Holbert was sitting at our house and we were laying coloring in the same coloring book face to face on the floor Mm -hmm. on our stomachs coloring. And neither of us had ever heard my mom swear. So all we hear and I can see it. We had one of those old black Bakelite phones, Mm -hmm. like the rotary dial phone and we actually had like a phone chair that was like, it was built for like, it was a little oh, bench yeah. with a little thing that you put your phone on. And my mom was sitting there and we weren't really paying attention except for that. We noticed that my mom's voice started getting angrier and angrier. And we started coloring more tense and more tense, like looking at each <laughs> other. And we used to put our foreheads together when we colored. I don't know why we did that, <laughs> but we had our foreheads together. We were coloring and we were like, probably talking about like what the fuck's going on because i was really little like Mm -hmm. i was probably like six or seven so mikey was probably like eight or nine Mm -hmm. (laughs) and all of a sudden i hear my mom yell well fuck you and the horse you fucking rode in on and she slams the phone down and mikey and i just dropped our crayons and our mouths went (gasps) and we just looked at each other with our mouths wide open and he goes auntie joy and my, uh, she cried. It was awful. Aww, it was sad. But we yeah. were so fucking shocked that, like, I had never heard my mom say the, f- the fucking F word ever. Not at that point in my life. Yeah. And clearly neither had Mikey. And we were both horrified. It was awful. Yeah. But 
Damn, I would be pissed too. Yeah. But it's a lot of hard work. Yeah, yep. And it's not going to look exactly like your bouquet did because it's pressed. It's a pressed flower. It's not going to be a three-dimensionally preserved. Well, she knew what my mom did. She'd seen my mom's pressed flowers before. Yeah. That's why she asked. I think that she just didn't want to pay for it, she to be asked. perfectly yeah. honest. You know, what little. you going to yeah. do? But that's neither here nor there. <laughs> I just think that was the first time I remember my mom swearing, and it was awesome. And Mikey and I were so shocked. And I can just, I have this image of that happening and us dropping our crayons and looking at each other like, holy shit. Yeah. It was great. Let's talk about ways we can preserve some flowers. I know that I've been obsessed with trying to collect all the little violets that pop up in the yard. Oh, those press so beautifully. Yeah, they're so cute. And they so, do. Violets and pansies are my favorites to yes, press. Yes, pansies too. And my mom has volunteer pansies. I just got my first in her gravel that have just like spread all over yeah. the place. They're in the gravel of their driveway. There's a, just like a bazillion little pansies. They've stopped parking in that spot because there are so many pansies. They're super cute. They are. I love them. But before we get to pressing, I want to talk about ways to preserve flowers because not all flowers press. Yeah. Like what about irises? Do they just melt? Those are too squishy. Yeah. They just. So I have a list of no squishies. But, okay. But first you can, you can dry them in the microwave. Oh, weird. You use cat litter. You put the Ew. flowers. If you're trying to preserve a flower whole, you put flower, you put, you don't use dirty cat litter. I what know. are you ooing about? <laughs> Spill. You put cat litter in. in the microwave? Yeah, you clean cat litter fresh out of the box. Don't, Lonnie's having a little fucking hissy fit over here. <laughs> and then you put your flower like a rose or something lumpy. And then you put more cat litter on top and then you cook it in the microwave for three, two to three minutes. And that absorbs all the moisture. Yeah, and then you leave it setting because you want the cat litter to cool completely. So it finishes the process and then you take Weird. the flower out and it's preserved. You can also buy. Three-dimensionally? Yeah. You can also buy. <laughs> My mind just they look dried. I mean, it's a like dried flower. It's not oh, like okay. It's not it's preserved look like, like a dried rose that you've hung upside yes. down. But okay. only it's going to hold its shape a little better, probably. Okay. Okay. Um, they also at any Michaels or any craft store sell microwave kits that you can do that. Oh. Um, you can also preserve them in silica. So, like you know, the shit that comes in your box of shoes. Yeah. They sell those kits that you you can buy that shit at the craft stores, like okay. a package of it. And you just, you know, I think you put them in there and let it set for a week or so in the silica. Same idea. It draws the moisture out of the flower. This is for if you want something preserved three-dimensionally. Okay. You can also, if you are just drying them to dry them, like my lavender, I, I need to harvest my lavender pretty soon. You tie string around it and hang it upside down. Mm -hmm. in a dry area out of direct sunlight because the sunlight will make it dry too fast and get crumbly. And it depends on, it really depends on the humidity in the area that you live in, how long it'll take for it to dry. So that I think is for drying. That's how I dry my herbs when, when I'm, cause I grow fresh herbs all summer. And then at the end of the summer, when things are starting to die off, I dry them. I've accidentally dried flowers by just leaving them in the vase. That's forever. another method. You can just leave them in the vase and they'll dry. And I'm like, oh, look at these. They still look the same. Yeah. And they're crispy. Oh. My cat eats flowers like that. I can't have them on my table or anywhere. I can't put fresh flowers out. Yeah. I have these really cool. That's jerky cool. Like, My friend Hillary put them in a bouquet and they're these purple flowers. They're very pretty and they just dried exactly how they looked. They're so cool. I was like. Sweet, I'm saving these. Yeah. Bonus flowers. Do that. that. last forever. I like it when that happens. Um, so the other way to preserve and the cooler way and the more, uh, I would say, what is the word I'm looking for? Uh, there are more options to do things with the flowers when you press them. Yes. You press the flower um, and you can press them in a book. Mm -hmm. I've done that before. Just use parchment to make sure that you don't fuck up your book pages yeah, that's or what you doing. don't get lettering on your, yeah, yeah, <laughs> your things. I should have gotten water. Cause yeah, they can kind of stick a little bit. Mm -hmm. So the parchment really helps. It totally helps. Um, and, and, you know, and then when they're dry, they just slide right off. Yeah, they do. So cool. 
Or you can build a flower press. Which I think I'm going to have to I am going to post on our, on the blog, I'm going to post uh, some plans. I found a couple different plans, but basically I'm going to tell you how to build one right now because it's okay. super easy. You can make them whatever size you want. Okay. You just get a sheet of, I just use in the past a sheet of half inch plywood. Mm-hmm. doesn't have to be anything fancy. Oh, the only that. thing you want to do is sand the sides of it just to make sure that, because you're going to be handling it and touching it. Yeah. You don't want to get slippers. Yeah. Slippers are stupid and I hate them. Yeah. Me too. Uh, cut it to whatever size you want. Mm-hmm. I prefer a nice cute square. Mm-hmm. I don't like a rectangle. I like a square. Mm-hmm. So Easier you need, to work with. Yes. You need two pieces, a top and a bottom piece. You need corrugated cardboard, several layers, because you're going to sandwich layers so you inside can do the press you can so do a many whole bunch flowers. of flowers oh, you also yes. want to get blotter paper now you can buy that usually at office supply stores or um, paper supply stores you can also buy it online but beware that blotter paper has a craft tax on it if you buy it a place specifically for putting in your flower presses. It's more fucking expensive. I call it the imaginary craft tax because shit like that happens all the time. You buy something at the craft store that you could buy at a hardware store or a paper supply store right. or anywhere else. And it is going to be... Or an LSD making supply store. Yeah. Just kidding. Anywhere. <laughs> Dude, seriously. And it is way more expensive. So I would go to, I would just buy a pack of the fucking blotter papers for a desk blotter and leave it at that. Make sure it's nice, heavy. What that does is it's a, it not only has an absorbent layer, but it keeps the corrugated pattern from transferring to your dried flowers when you're smashing them down. So you don't want them to have the lines from the cardboard. Yeah. So you use... So you put the flowers on the between two pieces of blotter paper? Yes. Okay. So you also need, we'll just go back over the supplies really quick. You're going to need four carriage bolts, probably four inch long carriage bolts, five sixteenths diameter. Mm-hmm. And then you will need some big washers, like three eighths inch washers. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then you want five sixteenths wing nuts to screw it all together. And that's all you need. And the only tool that you need, if you go to a hardware store, they will cut your plywood for you. Mm -hmm. You don't have to cut it yourself if you don't have a saw. They don't have access to that. Um, You just need a drill. Yeah. So you can drill the holes and to get them in the same spot because they have to line up. Yeah. I would draw a straight line from corner to corner Mm -hmm. and then measure in an inch from each corner and make your mark. And that's where you drill your hole. Awesome. So totally get this. You can drill your hole and then when you put it together, so you would put like, so you take the lid off. Okay. And you're, we're loading it up with some flowers. Okay, cool. So we've got lots of violets. We've got lots of violets and lots of pansies and yeah. some fern fronds. Ooh, yes. And some really cute shit, right? Yes. So now we want to press it. <laughs> you're going to put a layer of cardboard down. Corrugated cardboard. Okay, I got that. Cut to the size of... You cut it to the same size, but then the, you cut the corners inside. off. Okay. You just cut the corners off because it'll miss the corners. So, yeah. Okay, so, cool. then you've got your layer of cardboard. Mm-hmm. And then you put your blotter paper down. Okay. You can also, if you would like to ensure that there are no... There's no... Tra- well, hello, jerky cat that just opened the door right up. <laughs> that you want to really ensure that the that the ripples from the corrugated cardboard don't get through when you press. Because you're squeezing it down pretty tightly. Mm-hmm. You can put a couple layers of newspaper in there as more padding. Oh, okay. And then you put your uh, blotter paper. Mm-hmm. And you can also put a sheet of parchment down if you want to make sure that they don't stick. Because parchment actually is still absorbent but makes it come off. Real yeah, easily. Yeah, it's a nice nonstick surface. So then you lay out your flowers. I like to group them by type. Mm-hmm. And you want to keep a little bit of space between them. Mm-hmm. And you just lay them, you know, flower face down. Mm-hmm. Arrange them in a way that you want them to be pressed. And then you put the exact opposite of what you did. So you do your parchment or your blotter paper 
or both. Mm -hmm. Then the newspaper if you're padding it and then cardboard. And then you can start over again and do newspaper, whatever. You can do however many levels you want. That's rad. And then you screw it down as tight as you can get it. You Mm -hmm. you put the top back on and you put your carriage bolts on, your washer Mm -hmm. first, Mm -hmm. then your carriage bolts on. And then you spin the little things and you smash it down as tight as you can do it. With your bare hands, because you got to be able to open it. I can do that. And then what you have to do is wait. Yeah, how long? About a month. Okay. So you might want to put a little sticky note on there, like, Mm -hmm. doesn't open until June or whatever. And don't fuck with them. Yeah. Don't open it. it. Don't fuck with them. Just leave it. Yes. Leave it alone. Forget you have it for a month. Set a thing on your phone. Hide it from yourself. There you go. Yeah. And then it'll be a fun day when you're like, you can get your flowers now. And you go, yay. I have some tips about flowers, though, okay, that yeah. you can use for pressing. Yeah, it's not just any flower. So, like Lonnie mentioned, irises they just, or they probably melt. tulips, yeah, cam- camellias. They yeah, those. They get a brown. Squishy, and... soft flowers yeah. are not going to work. What they're going to do is get moldy in your flower press Ugh. and make you sad inside. And make it, yeah. They'll get fucking gross. Yeah. Anything that gets like that shitty rust on it when it rains. Yeah. I have the most beautiful camellia bush in my front yard Mm -hmm. and it's beautiful for like two days. Yeah. And then it rains and and there's such like a delicate, Mm -hmm. almost pink. They're so beautiful and they're such a pretty shaped camellia flower. And then they go. It's always like they bloom and then we get a fucking windstorm and they just, then they're all or over the Or they rain and then they get yeah. all rusty and gross yeah. and they yeah. look like snot hanging off of the it's bush. such a bummer because, I, yeah, I love them too. You have to enjoy them for the moment that they're there. Yeah. <laughs> but basically anything that's going to be squishy. What about cherry blossoms? Oh, those are one of the best things to use. Oh, we say. have a wealth of... Well, not now. But, it's too you know, late for those. But yes, it is this year. But that's next one year, way to enjoy the magic. Yes, forever. without dying of your fucking allergies. Because yes. those fuckers kill me. I'm so allergic to ornamental cherries. Oh, Every year when the cherry so trees bloom. Pretty. They're so gorgeous. And they're all over Portland. Yes. So... Cher- uh, any fruit tree blossoms are perfect for that. Apple blossoms, oh, okay. pear blossoms, like anything like that. Because they're cute little delicate mm-hmm. blossoms feel a pansy or a violet anything with that texture it's like a velvety uh, yeah or of. just a thin delicate like okay. almost wing like texture like mm-hmm. anything like that um you can also press things like daisies uh the middle will smash weird yeah but yeah. you can still do it but my advice for things like roses and stuff like that and, uh, oh, you know what else is cool? You can do the petals, right? Yes. Do individual petals. Yeah. And then you can put them back together or make something out of them. And hydrangeas are awesome. Like the little oh, yeah. individual flowers on the hydrangeas. Um, okay. Heliotrope makes pretty little dot flowers, like little dark purple. Okay. Like the individual blossoms. Bleeding hearts are cool, really cool side, like, Oh, yeah. From the side view. Oh, I should try those. I have some of those. And don't forget your greenery, your foliage, well, I like have leaves. This weird, and... You know those weird, is it euphorbia or that weird shit people grow all over Portland? I don't know. I have, they're like a green flower. They're like those huge, they're almost like weeds, but they get giant. They look mm-hmm. Dr. Seuss-like. They're, but I'm wondering if you can press those. Maybe experiment in a book. Yeah. Because if it's squishy, it's not going to, it's not going to do, if it has yeah. a thick, squishy petal, it's not going to do it well. But don't forget your grasses and your foliage. Like yeah. fern fronds, any kind of fern. Even when they're still curly, like when they first open oh, up, yeah. um, the leaves from your flowers, uh, grasses, and yeah. just all kinds of, you can, because you, you know, and in the fall, fall leaves. Mm-hmm. When they're soft still, you can press them and it preserves them nice and makes them nice and flat and pretty. And, does, and it keeps the color too, doesn't mm-hmm. it? It does. That's what I love. Yeah, I was amazed. These little violets. I didn't do a very good job, so they're pressed kind of crooked and weird. Mm-hmm. But still, it's cool. You see the pattern, the color exactly. And you want vibrantly colored flowers yeah. because so they don't wash out when they dry. Yeah. Because a lot of them will get... I'm sorry. I, have I guess some white flowers will kind of brown. Mm-hmm. Kind of, they might, but... yeah. Over time, uh, when you display them, we're going to talk about different ways you can use them, but you should treat dried flowers just like you do any kind of archival papers. You don't want to use 
you want to use archival quality like if you're putting it behind glass use archival quality glass that has uv filters on it um you want to use glues that are acid free mod podge Mod Podge is acid free. You're you're good with that. Okay, um, I've already done some. So because you things. don't well, you don't want them to brown. Yeah, and and that's just going to prolong the life of the flower. Mm-hmm. Anything you that will protect it from UV light, don't put it in direct light. Whatever you want to harvest your flowers midday when it's hot because you don't oh. want them to have dew on them. Don't do it in the morning. Yeah. or the evening or after you've watered which you should be watering in the morning or the evening anyway. So midday when it's nice and dry and, you know, it's not raining, don't do it on a rainy day or a day that has like following a real rainy day Mm -hmm. because you want them to be pretty dry when you put them in your press because any added moisture is going to increase the likelihood of them getting moldy instead of drying. Yeah. And that would make you sad. Yeah, you open it up all excited and then you're And it's like, pressed mold. Uh, yeah. Mer, fuck off, mold. I don't yeah. like it. This is a probably a silly question. Can you reuse your blotter paper like on yes. the next round? Oh, absolutely. Sweet. So once yeah, you buy keep, a pack of it, you yeah. can just keep using it keep until using it's Keep using it until it's gross and then get a new one. Okay. Um, I'm cheap and I like this. I like this oh, another thing almost that's free really, art supply. What's really pretty <laughs> is to press like Queen Anne's lace oh, yeah. and baby's breath and stuff because mm-hmm. it makes just a little frilly. Yes. Get creative yeah. with what you press, but just remember squishy stuff is not going to like any. Yeah. Basically, I find that all of the bulb plants kind of have squishy flowers. Yeah, that's true. Except for maybe like daffodils. Or, yeah, dahlias probably. Well, they're big. You could do individual petals of dahlias, I bet. Okay. Some. Or that'd be cool if you had this huge, like, Well, it depends on the dahlia, too, because sized. there are so many different kinds. Because some of them look like sea anemones. Mm-hmm. Like, my mom has a... My mom has one yellow dahlia that grows blossoms bigger than my fucking head. Like, awesome. she has a... They're she so loves cool. dahlias. They're her favorite. But, like, even those, the sea anemone kind, she could probably pull the individual petals out mm-hmm. and press those and then put them back or together in a really... did press the whole thing, it'd be display. weird, but it might be cool. Yeah, it might be cool. But that's an awful lot of... Uh, flower. Flower to press <laughs> yeah. in one big... Like, moisture-wise, yeah. I'm yeah. thinking. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, but you can take them apart and then put them back together. And some dahlias, though, are d- they look like just a regular old flower with petals. So mm-hmm. it depends. Another thing I like to press are the little scented geraniums. Yeah. Because some of them have little... I was just thinking I have these wild geraniums growing mm-hmm. in my yard that are just these pretty little pink, mm-hmm. pinkish purple some flowers. Some geranium flowers can be squishy, gross flowers, though. No, these like, are like little... Some are little so pretty these ones. probably press mm-hmm. really... I love the and the scented geraniums them. smell good too. Yeah. So I love scented geraniums. Ew, fun. What about jasmine? Jasmine, lavender, like all the smelly flowers. Mm-hmm. Uh, clematis actually does really pretty, like Ooh, the color I love clematis. clematis. So. I had one that mm-hmm. sadly died when it got really gold. But mm-hmm. I need to get a new one because I loved that thing. Mm-hmm. <sighs> They're pretty. So all the flowers. Now we've pressed these. Now what the fuck are we going to do with them? I have I some project them ideas. in my spell book. Well, I have lots of project ideas. And actually, I spent, I got, I had to make myself stop filling our Pinterest board for this episode today. Like I had to physically, Whoa. I had to say, Katie, you have to go set up to start recording. So there's like a billion ideas stop. on Pinterest. Stop about it already. Yeah. And you're probably going to add a million because now you're, I can see the idea wheels of churning in Lonnie's head right now. Well, yeah. It's just exciting to a way to preserve all these things that yeah. are well, growing so in my yard. You can put them, like I said, you can um, put them on a uh, felt or paper backing mm-hmm. and just frame them, like make a beautiful dry, like pressed bouquet mm-hmm. on the wall or it's very 70s. It's very 70s, but man, I'm going to tell you, some of the artists, there's a lady in on the Pinterest board. I'm going to have to look her name up because, man. I'm thinking of incorporating them into illustrations as well, like using absolutely. pressed rose petals as a fairy skirt. Well, that's one of the things I have on the list is like fairy so clothes. Cute. Yes, fairy clothes. I have to find this lady's so name because cute. I'm not even fucking kidding you, Lonnie. You're going to die when you see this. Oh, no. So I'm not me, ready yet. Let me I have see. so many things. I have flowers to press. 
<laughs> okay. So this lady, these are actually, some of them look like they're just dried flowers and not necessarily pressed. But some of them look pressed. And her name. There was a woman in Portland that did fairy outfits. Fairy clothes. You talked, of, we talked yeah, about those Out of ones. stuff in the backyard. I think we talked about Beautiful. them when we did like a nature, yeah. maybe a nature effort. These so, adorable little shoes. Her oh name God. is uh, Anne Don- Donkelar. I, I, I can you pronounce that? Donkelar. I don't know. It looks very Scandinavian. Donkelar. Yeah, like a and, but look Dutch at that. name or something. Holy macaroni! They're like gorgeous little, just vibrant little pops of just beautiful flowers that looks like a i think some of them are preserved but if you scroll image. down some of it's not like the mushroom how i think that she's dried them okay those are real know. it looks like an illustration that's amazing no maybe it is maybe i'm full of shite no it's okay um beautiful but even so And interesting ways to, like, we talked about this in our last episode with transparencies, and it kind of carries over into this episode, um, arranging them and smashing them between using the the double glass panes frames. Yeah, that's what it looks like these are because there's the shadow, Yeah, which is cool. You put them, so you're smashing them between the two pieces of glass, and then the frame snaps around it, and then you have this beautiful transparent they're just like they're floating on the wall. Mm-hmm. They're so gorgeous. And it really brightens up a room. And honestly, think of the fucking brownie points you'd score giving your mom something like that for her birthday or Christmas. Yeah. Or Mother's Day or something. Yeah. Those By the are way, pretty. happy Mother's Day. I didn't see you on oh, Mother's yeah, Day. That's right. You were on your vacay or well, getting yeah, ready we to out, leave. Yeah, we went out to um, brunch and it was mm. delicious. I know. We went to brunch at Fat City. Ooh. That was a wait, but it was worth it. We went to the Swiss hibiscus and they it was mm. so good. It's like Swiss food. I don't know. Yummy. Swiss food is pretty damn good, surprisingly. There was this one. This was a salad, I put in quotes, and it was like sausage and cheese and like a creamy. <laughs> it's so naughty. It's so naughty, but it so delicious. delicious. Yeah. I'm getting hungry, so my mouth yeah, is like watering. Sausage and cheese in a creamy sauce. That's all it was. And I scarfed it down. Like, they, they cut out with cute squares. Okay, I don't you got to stop. Because my stomach. Did you hear my stomach? No. It just went. <laughs> so funny. So, you can also display pressed flowers on um, sheet music or book pages mm, or handwritten yeah. letters and frame it. Just it's very romantic. It is romantic. Yes. I have a romantic side. Yeah. I, I can do. imagine incorporating some lace and stuff. Yes. Very, very romantic. Uh, very Victorian yes. feeling. These um, are beautiful. I also saw somebody, and this is more for leaves and probably sturdier flowers, but mm-hmm. I have seen people use hole punches, like the fancy shaped hole punches on dried pressed flower leaves flowers and leaves and then you use use it as a confetti uh oh my mother in law is calling me I'm gonna hit pause okay we had like a break on accident well no my mother in law called and then Lonnie had to pee yeah so now we're back and I lost track of what I wanted to tell you one of my ideas tell me your idea but this isn't a pressed flower but I had so I did the I had these dried roses, and this one kind of turned out ugly, so I was peeling the petals off, and then I coated them in glitter, right? She coated them in glitter, and they're beautiful. They look so pretty. So I'm like, I kind of want to try to make earrings out of them. Dude. Like dangly, like so hang them I'm off a chain. I'm going to stop you there and tell you that one of the projects that I was going to talk about are people are using epoxy resin and dipping the little delicate flower petals in the boxy resin mm-hmm. and preserving them and making them hard and using them on earrings yeah. and necklaces. I think and the, I want to do it. Yes. I think the Mod Podge, it's still going to be slightly delicate, but not as bad because once you coat it in the Mod Podge, it kind of has give. You know, it's not going to snap. But the epoxy resin is Epoxy cheap. resin. Okay. Yeah. You can I'll just get that. a little bottle, like a two part non yellowing, make sure it's non, it'll, it'll say non yellowing. Mm-hmm self-leveling you can still coat that in glitter yeah yeah you so can mix glitter pretty. in the resin 
Yeah. And then dip them. Yeah. Hey, because yeah, I want some dangly earrings with like a bunch of little. Well, since we're talking about it. jewelry, let's just. I have a whole list of shit that people oh, are doing with jewelry. Sweet. Like speaking of epoxy resin, there people are, are using again the little cabochon molds. I think we talked about them in the last episode. Mm-hmm. You can buy the molds, um, and they are putting pressed flowers, sealing them in epoxy resin, clear epoxy resin. And using them as pendants yeah. with just with or without a cabochon s- setting. Right. And they're doing earrings and necklaces and they, some, some bracelet people have person? like the solid bracelet Those where cool. it's just a mold and they have all the awesome flower petals mm-hmm. inside the bracelet and rings. Yeah. Holy shit balls, man. I need yeah. to get me one of those. Or yeah. The make clear rings are really beautiful. Yes. Yeah. And we're going to do an episode about mold making here pretty soon using using stuff to make molds. So it might okay. apply to this or help you with that because you could do all kinds of cool shit. Yeah. Epoxy resin is awesome. I love sinking stuff and preserving it in resin. Okay. I've like never tried. Stuff, yeah. But where are you going? My cat is being just a It's a very right strong here. smelling it's, stuff, isn't it? It is stinky. It's very stinky. It and I'm loopy. not very good at ventilation. But yeah. if you use it in small bits... Like you're not like if you're just doing like you can just do it and then leave the area. Have so fans would you on just the lay them out open. on a parchment and they would dry? Like like if I just dipped a rose petal in it, I think yeah, you would put them out. or just maybe hang them on a string okay. or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Whatever. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I want to do cool. that. And also for along the jewelry lines. I talked about this last week too. And I, now I'm obsessed with this idea and I want to start experimenting with it. Smashing them between two pieces of glass and then using the copper tape around the edges and soldering them. Mm-hmm. I kind of like the way it makes it kind of have like a nice rustic yeah. look about it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's really yeah, cool. Yeah. Yeah. You can do it that way. And you can use whole flowers or petals. Like, like, wouldn't it be cute just to have a little pansy on your neck? Yeah. Or a little violet? Or a little fern frond. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A little curly cue fern frond. Yeah. That would be awesome. I have some, yeah. I have or some you could do them like do small growing. cabochons and like put them in rings. Mm-hmm. Seriously, people. Yeah. There are, I'm mean, like, I mean, we're not even going to get to cover all of the ideas that um, I have, but he just quickly to go down the line, you can make lanterns and candle holders. Yeah. By mod podging them onto glass containers. Mm-hmm. Or you can mod podge them on the outside of like if you're doing um if you ever do like infused olive oils as gifts or anything yeah. like that, you can put the herbs or flowers pressed and like mod podge them on because they have mod podge for glass. Pretty. So I swear to God we're doing an episode on all the mod podges. We yeah. have to do that stat. I'm gonna write them a letter. And ask them if they can send us samples. Yes. Because we are advertising for them for for free and we do it all the time. Yeah. Um, I don't want to miss mixed media collage though, because I just did incorporated them yeah, into this there, spell book there, thing. Don't don't discard that because you can put press flowers in all kinds of collage work mm-hmm. that you're doing. And even on the Pinterest board. You guys, the Pinterest board is phenomenal this week for this episode. Uh, they have a whole entire landscape and portrait paintings that are I was done just thinking in about that. petals, flower mm-hmm. petals, flower just petals and leaves, think. and they're breathtaking. Yes. Like, I was looking at that, and I was like, no fucking way. That is flower petals, not paint. Like, someone painstakingly glued all these power flower petals, power petal flower petals down, and it is um, they're stunning. Actually, that's another piece I want to work on. Is when I did these little rose petals, the glittery rose petals. I'm so inspired, and to do them on like a velvet background with, mm. and making them into some kind of picture. Can you hand me that green pencil right mm-hmm. on the other side of that patch? Because I just you just gave me a totally like because I think that would be fucking beautiful. And I'm thinking maybe just some simple like uh, spiral image, like a shell, make it look like a conch or something i don't know yeah like they do with sometimes they do it with those teeny tiny seashells mm-hmm. like that yeah but with the glittery rose petals or whatever oh my well and you can God. also create i saw this other really cool thing where you can create <laughs> shapes like there was a skull that was made like 
like they like it was almost like they stenciled somehow or like they cut the flowers out to make them the shape they wanted yeah. to do it was so like it would make like a sugar looking skull, skull a, right? a skull and i saw like a whole skeleton or <sighs> oh my god so and a heart just a simple heart so fucking cool oh, a simple heart with a <laughs> Or a bird shape but with rose petals. Yes, that's so pretty and romantic. Yes. We're getting we're so girly today. <laughs> Bonnie's PMS, and that's what her problem uh, is. Yeah, I got estrogens. She's got all the estrogens. <laughs> I got all the estrogens. <laughs> if you're missing any, Bonnie <laughs> has your estrogens I do. right now. You can please take it back. Uh, you can also. It's really cool to um. You can if you're making candles. You can seal them on, uh, press flowers on the outside of your candle. You just paint wax over it. Oh, yeah. And I've done that. I did that when I was a little kid. With, oh, yes. With I've images, seen those. like with yeah. actual pictures or something. But yep. oh my God, you can make some pretty, pretty candles. Mm-hmm. And, and then soaps. It glows through. Mm-hmm. And you can do it in soaps yep. also. And, um, in paper. When you make handmade papers, yes. you can put pretty, flower petals in the paper like either chunked up or even like you could do a little arrangement on the corner Mm -hmm. so that like it'll be on the corner of your paper when it dries uh and them on your gift tags yes gift tags and i saw this thing where people are making and they actually carry them at the store at the coast where it's a nursery my mom hidden acres nursery has them um they smell delicious they're making little air fresheners and they use scented oils in the wax and then they use pressed flowers in the little scented oils so it looks like almost like a little mini soap on a rope a little rope through it but it's very thin and little and they're very fragrant and they're pretty and they smell delicious wow they are good uh one thing that i want you all to remember is that you can eat violets and pansies and yes you can sugar them you sugar them or press them and like my wedding cake we made i made my own wedding cake Mm -hmm. we i cooked it all i made all the frosting and actually kurt and my friend Lacey, who was one of my bridesmaids uh iced the cake and finished it and we decorated it with sugared pansies and violets and just had the cake topper Pretty. Which is a white cake oh. with all kinds of pansies and violets on them. Too. Rose petals. And you can put that shit in cookies. Like just bake a cookie with a little pressed flour inside of it. I use lavender a lot. I, I cook with lavender a lot. I have a recipe for a lavender cake and a lavender cookies that I always decorate with either sugared lavender or some pressed lavender flowers. Mm-hmm. That is a special. Oh, and, and. I'm going to make these for my mom's birthday. So I hope you're not listening, mom, but uh, you can make suckers and encase little flowers yeah, inside of the suckers. That's cute. So I'm going to do that for her birthday. And I think I'm not going to use any of my molds. I'm just going to pour them on parchment paper and then lay a stick in them and let them just be cute yeah. little natural blobs that way. I'm trying to just go through. I think we got everything. That I had on here. Holy shit. I didn't think we were going to talk about it all. It's amazing. Like this just scratches the surface. I was seriously blown away looking at all the cool shit people are doing with dried flowers. To me, it's like a practically free art supply. It is. Which is fucking amazing. Because I mean, I love stuff like that. And you like gardening and you like growing stuff and you like nature. Yeah. And I like to just feel like I'm. Yeah. I don't know. It. Yeah. How fun. Just having a, the flower press is your only investment, but mm-hmm. then with that, you can just well. Make my endless... mom, like I, my mom said, we're gonna. My mom and I are gonna make flower presses this weekend. She has wood laying around. She has I a saw. Too. She has a drill. I need to cut a piece of wood. I have this perfect piece of wood. I just need to cut in half, mm-hmm. and it's and drill it. It's ready to roll. Totes, my yeah. goats. Hell yeah! Why did I just say that? It's like I flash back to two thousand. Is that a thing we said then? I don't know. I thought that was a newer thing. I think that it's an old thing that oh. I just keep saying. Oh. <laughs> I that I just know. can't let go. Ah, it's like the word I'm yo. Sorry, like once you start saying yo after stuff, mm-hmm. you can't fucking break yourself from doing it. Yeah. Like my friend, fucking Super Dave, David West, you motherfucker. Like, 
15 years ago went through this well maybe not quite 15 years ago but it was it's over 10 years ago went through this phase where he said yo after everything and when you're around someone that says shit like that it catches on and then i started saying yo after everything and mm-hmm. i have not been able to break myself of the habit <laughs> yo <laughs> yeah my son i drive him crazy i'm like dude quit leaving your fucking dirty milk glass on the counter yo yeah, it's a nice and he's like, "Mom, exclamation! Stop it! Point on things. Tell my husband, have... quit pissing on the toilet seat, yo. <laughs> or if you're gonna do it, wipe it up, yo, yo. I know, motherfuckers. I said, my friend Ryan, we would have whole conversations with just the word, dude, dude. dude. I can totally dude. do that. I say, dude, a lot, dude. That is a serious dude. West Coast thing. Did you know that, dude?" She's duding me. Dude. 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 <laughs> it is. And you can almost have, like, you can express any emotion with the inflection. I think you can do the same thing with the word, word fuck. Dude. Fuck. Fuck? Fuck, dude. Fuck. See? <laughs> <laughs> Yay! All right, yo. I don't need a big vocabulary. No. I just need dude, fuck, and yo. <laughs> dude, fuck. Yo. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> we have a new language. Yep. It's called dude, fuck, yo. <laughs> dude, fuck, yo. Right? All right. Oh my god, we're so loud today. Look at us. I know. Blah, so, next week we're going to talk about stuff. I don't know what it is. Because <laughs> I spent all day Monday, all morning Monday, writing out our entire summer schedule. That's a lot. For three months, I have shows planned. They don't always stick. Sometimes I we look at an idea when we get to that month and where something else comes up or... Mm-hmm. I really start researching it and go, uh, I don't think we can do a whole episode on this. So we'll just save it for like a different episode later. Mm-hmm. Yo, dude, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> but now I can't fucking find it on my computer. That like I can't sucks. find the file anywhere. That sucks. It's like that morning never existed. So I don't <laughs> remember what we're doing next week. <laughs> You'll find it. It'll happen. I'll find it. So we're doing something. Trust me. And I'm sorry we were gone, by the way. I forgot to apologize. Oh, in the yeah. Last, it was vacation last time. It was vacation. Yeah. We need to take vacays, too. I liked like, doing this it is, in May. Like, uh, it was perfect. Yeah. We have this, like, this is a year-long podcast. Yeah. And I, I realized, like, a lot of the podcasts that I like have seasons. Like, This American Life has a season. Oh, yeah. Radio Lab has you a just season. Wait, does Serial, like... like yeah, you're like, give me more. I need more. I know, more. or like this new one I started listening to last year. They finally come back and they replay an episode they already played. Like, I'm know. like, come on, guys. Like, I just discovered one that started <sighs> last year called The Mystery Show. That one is yes. the one. I'm like, I was so excited. There's a new one, finally. It's been forever, right? It's yeah. been a long time. But it was an old one, wasn't it? Was it was an old one. Fuckers. It was a repeat. I was like, oh, yeah. I love I've that show. Before. I guess I'll just listen to it again. Thanks, guys. Fuckers. <laughs> anyway, we we try not to do that to you guys. Yeah. So we need we vacations sometimes. Yeah, we know how that feels. feels, and we know how being jerks to your waitress feels. So we're going to go eat now. And we're going to be nice, and we're going to tip well. All right. So Yay. until next week, go make some cool shit, yo. Do it now. Dude, fuck what? Yeah. Oh, wait, yo. yo. Dude, fuck yo. <laughs> yo, dude, fucking dude. do it now, though. Yo. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Good morning, Katie. This is your friend. I'm recording on the new test cam. I'm trying to figure out what the buttons do. But every once in a while, I take a break to poo.